so much has happened. So much that I am going to share. <laughs> I just would rather be on the other side of it and, and no longer still dealing with the situations before I do, but it may not be my choice. It may just have to be said and have to be spoken. I guess before all is said and done, I'm going to become a disability advocate, whether I want to or not. Because so much needs to be said. And the stuff like what's happened here can never be allowed to happen again anywhere to anyone else. I just need this to end so I can move on and move forward. I've been held in one place for so long and stagnant and so much energy going towards something so frugal and, and, and negative and unproductive. Tomorrow's not promised to anybody. And I would hate to look back on my life should anything happen during these surgeries and all this medical stuff that's coming up to go. The last nine years of my life when it was so much I could have done and would have done. That it was waste and just ugliness and negativity and, and just people deliberately messing with your life and, and trying to cause you unnecessary problems and just being nasty for no reason, no good reason, completely unprovoked just because of their racism and their egos and oh. I do know one thing, any harm comes to me any further harm and every bit that has come to this point every bit that has been done unto me tenfold a thousandfold it'll be done back unto them them and their families these people have no idea the curse that they're bringing upon their heads and their families it's like they mess with three generations in my family every generation of theirs because it always comes back to you bigger than it was when you sent it out that's why you don't go around deliberately doing nasty ugly mean things to people because it will come back to you and people go oh well, yeah I believe in karma it's not karma karma is when you die and come back and die and come back and die and come back until you learn the lessons that you were supposed to learn here in this world that's karma it's called the law of reciprocity. What you do will come back to you. And it will come back to you tenfold, a hundredfold, and a thousandfold. That's good or bad. And these people got it coming. Boy, do they have it coming to them. And I'm ashamed to say I want to see them get it. Because I know God doesn't like that and he doesn't like ugly and he doesn't want us to rejoice even in the punishment of people who have done evil to us but I would be a liar if I didn't say or didn't admit or own up to the fact I want to see it come back on them hard I'm that angry my spirit is that angry I've got to let that go because the thing about anger and 
Then forgiveness and hate. It's like drinking poison and hoping the other person will die. It only hurts the person feeling it. And not to confuse forgiveness with allowing them to get away with it. I have to let it go on a spiritual level so I won't feel the anger in my spirit. I've got surgeries and all kinds of major stuff that I need to be as positive as possible to get through. And I can't be holding on to this anger and this negativity I'm feeling inside about what's been going on. But having said that, it doesn't mean that they're not going to be held fully accountable for every single thing that they tried to pull. Even trying to f have fake charges and stuff brought against me and, and come up with kinds of lies, it would have been a felony. I've never been in trouble for anything in my life. I've never even had a parking ticket. And these people try to set me up. All because I asked them to do what they're supposed to do. We needed heat in this apartment and there's no heat. Water's dripping from the ceiling and there's a leak into the sink that's been there three years. A plumber still to this day has never come in here. This is a brand new building, just built. But if they're not taking care of it and doing what needs to be done, mold formed all over this place. You can't leave water and, and wet stuff everywhere. The carpet's everything. And not do anything about it. And completely negligence, complete negligence, completely refuse to do what you're supposed to do to take care of what is your responsibility to take care of. And the only person who's doing that mess with is me. And then I think by recruiting some other people of colors, because for the first six years I was the only one here. Once I filed discrimination charges against them, that's going to make them any less racist. Only a racist would think some crap like that. And they treat them biasly too. So now the only thing that they could actually did was help prove my point because they'll tell them of the crap that they've been dealing with with them <sighs> and lord since I'm venting this can't sleep big loud booms and bangs and crashes constantly from this heater that they won't fix all hours of the night you're sleeping as soon as you finally do fall asleep and that sleep is the hardest thing in the world for me because during the day when I'm hurt no matter how severe the pain is if I get busy doing something creative or, or, or working on something on the animations all the technical that takes so much concentration and focus to do I can pretty much block out a lot of the pain but at night you can't block nothing out you feel every bit of it. The nights are the worst for me because you're just laying there and you're so tired you want to sleep but you're in excruciating pain. My arm was basically severed and had to be reattached from the car accident. All the inner parts were torn loose. So there's tremendous nerve damage in my arm, my neck, and my back. So I go through pain on levels most people couldn't even begin to imagine. And I've had to learn how to function through the pain. Because I'm going to be in pain no matter what I do. So instead of laying around hurting and crying and, and feeling horrible, I do productive things and creative things like I would do had I not had been injured. And it takes my mind away from it. It's a distraction. It, it helps me cope. Almost like a form of meditation or therapy. And not being able to sleep on top of extreme levels of pain, which wears you out. Even if you're able to black out the pain, it just takes so much energy. It drains your body. Half the capacity of what I used to be, not even half, probably about a fourth of the capacity of what I used to be able to do in a course of a day is the best I can do. And that's a good day. But I, I constantly try to stay productive and, and positive 
and it's hard. It is so hard sometimes, just from the pain alone. Any one of the issues by itself would have been more than most people could bear. And then when you pile up all the different elements and aspects of what's been going on all together, it's only by God's grace I've made it this long and this far. But I have to say, I've, my body, my mind, and my spirit's been going tilt, 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 tilt. And having fools and foolish people playing games with me and getting up in my personal space and in my face and thinking I'm all right with it or they can get away with it because they think I'm a woman alone and because I'm injured and, and, and I am disabled, that they can get away with this mess. Lord, they just don't know. They just don't know.